Um, I would like to introduce now our third speaker from the University of Birmingham, Dr. Shishir Shetty. Um, and Dr. Shetty is going to speak upon, on Stablin 1 is a second line defense against oxidative stress and regulates tissue injury and repair. Give him a warm welcome. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the Selection Committee for giving me the opportunity to present my work here today. Uh, and first of all, I'd like to acknowledge that this work was funded by a Wellcome Trust Fellowship, but wouldn't have been possible without the support of my colleagues from the University of Birmingham, the University of Turku in Finland, and I'd also like to thank my clinical colleagues and patients for donation of blood and tissue from the University Hospitals Birmingham. So I'm a liver specialist, and this is a section of a normal human liver. Whatever the etiology of chronic liver disease, whether it's alcohol, excess, viral infection, or autoimmune disease, the pathway is very similar. And as we heard earlier, this is, this is fibrosis, organ fibrosis. And this is characterized, as we see here, by inflammation, architectural distortion, and scar formation. We also know that at the early stages, chronic liver disease can be completely asymptomatic. But there are proportions of patients who progress to this, where fibrosis, collagen deposition takes the place of normal liver tissue. And this is when patients develop risk factors for overt liver failure, a condition with an extremely high mortality, and also at risk of a lethal cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma. So these are also results from our own unit in Birmingham demonstrating the success of liver transplantation in managing liver disease. But I'd also like to highlight that these are the numbers of patients that we're adding to our transplant list year on year. And therefore, we desperately still require treatments for, organ, for liver fibrosis. We've taken the approach of trying to understand the pathological mechanisms of fibrosis to identify novel therapies. And so at the cellular level, you have the hepatocyte at the top, which is the functional unit of the liver. In close association, you have the liver stellate cell, which is the liver resident pericyte. But you also have endothelial cells, and Kupfer cells, which are the liver resident macrophages. In chronic liver injury, as I said, the victim of damage is the hepatocyte, but the key process is the activation, as we heard earlier, of the fibroblast. And this is the stellate cell. It becomes an activated liver myofibroblast, and as you can see here, it deposits collagen throughout the parenchyma. <coughs> but we know from recent research is that cellular crosstalk within this microenvironment is extremely important. And evidence now suggests that endothelial cells and macrophages have a very important role in the progression and resolution of fibrosis. But the underlying mechanisms are still unclear. We know that endothelial cells in the liver and macrophages can sense their microenvironment. And they do this because they express a range of pattern recognition receptors. The most well-known family are the TLRs, toll light receptors. They're evolutionary conserved. They're critical for innate immune defense and they recognize a range of exogenous and endogenous danger signals. Their signaling leads to the activation of interferons and pro-inflammatory cytokines. But there are another family, the scavenger receptors. They're also evolutionary conserved. They're expressed on predominantly innate cells, and they also bind a range of endogenous and exogenous danger ligands. But in contrast to TLRs, they're thought to be a redundant family of receptors and perform silent uptake of ligands. This has been brought into question with research recently demonstrating that scavenger receptors actually have diverse roles. They can have potent anti-inflammatory signaling as well as pro-inflammatory signaling. And they can also actually directly interact with TLRs on the cell surface. This work is really focused on immune responses. But we've noticed that one of these scavenger receptors, Stabilin-1, was upregulated in chronic liver disease. Stabilin-1 is again evolutionarily conserved. It's expressed on endothelial cells and macrophages and does recognize danger signals, specifically oxidized LDLs, as well as bacterial cell wall products. And as I said, we found it upregulated within the scar of chronic liver fibrosis. So we had a simple question. What role does Stablin-1 play in liver fibrosis and could it be a therapeutic target? And to answer this, we generated a full knockout Stablin-1 mouse and we exposed it to a model of chronic liver injury. Carbon tetrachloride is a toxin administered twice weekly for eight weeks, which then leads to liver fibrosis. <coughs> to, to assess liver healing and resolution of fibrosis, we repeated the model, but allowed the mice to heal for four weeks. 
Now, Stablin 1 knockout mice have a normal lifespan and no overt phenotype. But if you look at their hepatic tissue, they have collagen fibres throughout their parenchyma, as shown by the serious red staining here. When we injured our mice, you can see that the wild-type mice on the top row, when you compare carbon tetrachloride to oil control, there is some fibrotic scar. But as you see on the right-hand side, the Stablin 1 knockout mouse develops extensive scar formation. We see bridging formation that we see in advanced fibrosis. To validate this, we looked at the pathological collagens 1 and collagen 3. And you can see on the bottom clearly that the Stablin 1 knockout mouse has excess amounts of collagen. Interestingly, the second model of resolution also demonstrated that whilst the wild-type mouse after healing had some fibrotic strands, the Stablin 1 knockout mouse had extensive scarring. And again, we validated this looking at the collagens, and I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that at the transcription <coughs> level, wild-type mice after healing have gone back down to baseline. But the Stablin 1 knockout mouse, you can see, still has elevated levels of the collagens even after a four-week resolution period. To understand the underlying mechanisms, we decided to study Stablin 1 expression in the, in the murine liver. We found that constitutively, at baseline, wild-type mice express Stablin 1 on the endothelium. Using dual color fluorescence, you can see that Stablin 1 co lipolyzes with an endothelial-specific marker, CD31. We demonstrated that macrophages in the liver did not express Stablin 1 at baseline, using F480 as a specific marker. What we found was that during injury, a subset of macrophages upregulated their Stablin 1 expression, as you can see on the top row. And importantly, since we're studying fibrosis and the fibroblast is the central player, we, we studied uh, Stablin 1 expression on fibroblasts and found that fibroblasts with an alpha spar specific marker did not express Stablin 1. So finding out that the macrophages upregulated Stablin 1, we decided to focus on this population. We again performed immunohistochemical staining of F480 as a macrophage-specific marker. And as you can see here, the oil controls, both for the wild type and the knockout model, had very similar levels of macrophages. On injury, what we noted was that the wild type animal developed large prominent macrophages, which as you can see in the Stablin 1 knockout were not present. We discussed it with our pathological pathology colleagues, and they suggested that these could be ceroid-laden macrophages. To confirm this, they suggested a stain called a periodic acid shift diastase stain. You can see here that this stain actually does pick out these prominent macrophages. It's highlighted by the arrows. When we repeated this stain with the knockout, you can see the lack of these macrophages. And interestingly, periodic acid, periodic acid shift diastase picks up thickened basement membrane. And reciprocally, we saw increased scar. <coughs> so what are ceroid-laden macrophages? Well, they're macrophages that contain oxidized low-density lipoproteins. Within the liver, the most abundant oxidized LDL is malondaldehyde LDL. It's an autofluorescent material, and these macrophages are found at sites of cellular injury. But to our knowledge, their pathological relevance is unclear. We confirm that these macrophages contain malondaldehyde by staining for MDA. And you can see that the wild type does have distinct aggregates of this oxidized LDL which are absent from the full knockout. <laughs> what was the connection with fibrosis? Well, we performed immunofluorescent staining with the F480 marker, and you can see that it clearly highlights these prominent macrophages. When you overlay with the collagen scar, you can see their strategic position within the tissue. In the Stablin 1 knockout mouse, you see an absence of these macrophages and excess scarring. The questions we were left with was what was the source of fibrogenesis in the Stablin 1 knockout mouse? What was the mechanistic link with ceroid-laden macrophages? And why was there a delay in resolution? To answer this, we went back to the fibroblast as the central player in this process. And we found, using a fibroblast-specific marker called GFAP, that even at baseline levels, Stablin 1 knockout mice have an increased population of these fibrogenic cells. What was driving this increased population we decided to answer by performing RNA-seq analysis of wild-type liver tissue compared to full knockout liver tissue. We found several markers upregulated, but the striking one was chemokine CCL3. We know that this chemokine CCL3 is a pro-fibrotic agent, and it specifically drives the proliferation of fibroblasts. We validated this with 
qPCR. You can see that CCL3 is elevated in the Stablin-1 knockout mouse, but importantly, it remains elevated during that healing process, suggesting that it's also still playing a role in the resolution period. With dual color immunofluorescence, we could show that macrophages were the cells that were producing this chemokine CCL3. To try and link up seroid laden macrophages and CCL3, we isolated human monocytes which expressed Stablin 1, exposed them to malondialdehyde LDL, and we were able to show that Stablin 1 played a functional role in the uptake of malondialdehyde LDL, and importantly, this uptake of MDLDL actually regulated the levels of the chemokine CCL3. So to confirm the cell-specific function of Stablin-1, we went on to generate more genetic knockouts that were cell-specific. So uh, we used a lice 2 cre to generate a Stablin-1 macrophage-specific knockout and a Thai 2 cre to generate an endothelial-specific knockout. And to summarize, we found that it was the macrophage-specific knockout that had increased injury. And importantly, during the healing process, it very closely phenocopied the full knockout. We found increased collagen and ECM deposition by hydroxyprotein uh, measurement at the end of resolution. And importantly, we found that it was the chemokine CCL3 that was upregulated, confirming our hypothesis. To look at the interventional potential for Stabilin-1, We've repeated our model of carbon tetrachloride injury followed by healing in our macrophage-specific knockout, but transferred in wild-type macrophages which clearly expressed Stabilin-1 as an intervention, and we were able to find that this reduced the levels of fibrosis during the healing process. So what I'd like to summarize is that we believe we found a new homeostatic pathway within the liver. The liver is constantly exposed to oxidized LDLs, and Stabilin-1 maintains homeostasis by taking up these oxidized LDLs. With the loss of Stabilin-1, the, the abnormal sensing of oxidized LDLs leads to an excess amount of CCL3 within the liver, leading to fibroblast proliferation. During injury, the hepatocyte undergoes significant oxidative stress, and the levels of oxidized LDLs go up significantly. Now we require macrophages to upregulate Stabilin-1 and form seroid-laden macrophages. With the loss of Stabilin-1, we get an exacerbation of the chemokine CCL3, which leads to worsening injury, but also a delay in healing. So I'll come back to the family of scavenger receptors. And as I mentioned, they have diverse roles. I believe our research supports this, but rather than looking at the immune response, we show that scavenger receptors actually have potential downstream influences on organ fibrosis. And therefore, could, targeting Stabilin-1 could be a novel therapeutic option for this condition. Thank you very much.